Tombs of a Muscat has been out for a few days and I've been grinding extra hard this week putting in at least 50 hours into this content already. Attempting to get some of the most powerful new equipments in the game like the best in slot range Missouri armor and the Twisted Bow of Magic, the Tumikinch Shadow. Let's say we've managed to get ourselves a really nice piece of upgrade in this episode and I cannot wait to show you guys. If you are excited for more Race 3 content and the eventual item showcasing on Iron Bar from Race 3, definitely let me know by liking the video and subscribing. So, Race 3 has an incredibly unique system in which you can customize how easy you want it to be at the cost of unique chances by adding invocations aka handicaps into the run. The greater the risk, the greater the reward. But the real question is, just how much does increasing the challenge affect the drop rates? Surely, more challenging means more rewards. Is it a linear relationship though, or is it an exponential relationship? This has been the question that everybody's been dying to know, and unfortunately, we won't know for sure for a long time, because Jagex won't tell us exactly how it works, and the community needs to compile a lot of data to crack at how the draws will work in relationship to the difficulty levels. So for me, it's imperative that I try to experience Race 3 in various difficulties, ranging from entry mode all the way to expert. This episode is all about learning and trying to find the sweet spot in which we can grind at Race 3. For my first 50 or so hours of doing TOA, we try all difficulty levels up to 300, which is the starting point for expert tier rates. We don't know if reaching an expert tier rate is exponentially better or just linearly. We do know that at level 150, Jagex imply the uniques are exponentially better than entry mode. As they have said, the chance of getting things like Missouri is extremely, extremely low in entry mode. But in normal mode, it is implied that the chance of getting all the drops is much more realistic. Could that relationship be the same from normal mode to expert mode where expert mode is actually exponentially better than normal? Unfortunately, it is too early to tell because there are probably only a few hundred expert completions right now, so the sample size is just far too small. I have actually done a few expert runs in this video, but spoiler alert, there were no drops. Personally though, I definitely feel that expert mode definitely takes a lot more effort and gear overall to grind effectively versus just doing level 200 to 250 rates. I noticed that a lot of people just can't level 150, which is normal mode minimum, and many have success in getting uniques that way. However, I found level 150 a little too boring, and by the end of this video doing level 200 to 250s, which is a little bit before expert, were my favorite in terms of grinding, as it's only a little slower than 150s, but engaging enough to go for long hours. Anyways, I'll roll out the progress now and you can see it how it all went down in detail leading to the first ever purple. So starting out the episode, I tried with my team our first level 200 raid. It's definitely a bit challenging, but I think we kind of figure out most of what we have to do now going forward. So we should be getting close to attempting expert soon. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Oh, I see. So when he switches first, he switches his attacks. Oh, that makes it so much easier, dude. So his traditional attack cycle is he'll do melee, and then when he switches prayers, he'll do range. And when he switches prayers again, he'll do magic, and then he'll keep doing that over and over again. Oh, I got another tread. What the frick? Oh my god, they're so common. What do you do with these extras? So we are getting a lot better at the 200 levels. And we're shaving off minutes at a time, and that's just through understanding the mechanics better. So, for example, at Warden, when he starts spawning the sub-bosses to assist them in the fight, if it's Akka on the left, then he will use three range attacks against you guys first, and then he'll switch to three magic. So, you can tell when he switches by him stabbing his spear on the ground, or just counting attacks. So that way you can avoid a bunch of extra damage. Nice, PB. Nice. Was well, close. Damn, if we didn't die, we would have had it though, for sure. Ah, I'm alive. <laughs> oh, fuck. I had no supplies left, dude. Ah, oh, dude, 235 was hard, dude. Oh, I had a tier of Eladenis, whatever that is. Is that restored? 
Level 235 cleared. Gonna push for more. So pushing an expert has definitely made Warden Phase 2 quite challenging because the auto attacks can hit quite high and there's just a lot of different attacks going on so sometimes it's hard to tell which one's which but there's ways to know which auto attack is going to do. If it's holding his hands upwards that means he's going to fire a magic attack so you can just prep on ahead of time and you can also hear a very specific sound too if you have game sounds on. And when it's going to range, it will swipe his arm left and right, and that's how you know it's going to be ranged. So you don't even have to see the animation of the projectile, as long as you focus on the hand, you can already see it coming. Yo, 20kc, do I get a drop? Whee! Come on, come on. Bro, 25 Dranstones, 345k. Wow. I'm going to freeze the me melee guy. There you go. <laughs> Yo, killing the range beetle and the mage beetle is so much more important, and the melee guy just can't do damage when he's just stuck like that. 11 toll flag seeds? Okay, they definitely understand that I'm gonna go through so many brews, so they're like, Yo, take some toll flags and plant all of them. Oh my god, stop, bro. I'm stuck. Can you help me? Nope. So we don't know for sure what are the weaknesses of the different bosses yet, but there's one thing we're pretty damn sure of is that the last phase of Warden is super weak to range because T-Bow destroys it, and even if you don't have a T-Bow, F-Bow or uh, Zarya Crossbow would actually hit pretty well on it. But a lot cleaner though. Way cleaner. Let's go! So much food left. I got four demets. Oh wow, and blood essence. Oh my god. I totally did not expect them to add blood essence. I thought it was a next specific kind of drop in that area. White, yellow, black, red. Oh, easy, easy. Damn, bro. I'm still blowpiping the whole time. Feels good, man. We've uh, completed a few... Level 250 runs consistently today, it barely failed any. I don't think we failed any today actually. So that's good. We're gonna push it at 300 because there's a handicap called Insanity. Let me show you here. Insanity is level 50 points. So that would bump it up to 300, which is expert mode. And the Warden will attack super, super duper fast at the end of the phase. And everything in general will hit a bit harder because the overall raid level went up. So. So a lot of people ask, which invocations should you put in your race 3 setup? And honestly, at 150, it's not a big deal what you put in. You'll figure out what you like within a few attempts, I would say. But at 300 though, it gets really tricky. What you put in really does matter. And I definitely noticed some invocations made things terribly worse, whereas others was really nice, like minimal hassle. So something like Medic for the Scarab boss was absolutely horrible because the swarms constantly would show up, making it oh, a nightmare to try to control the boss from not healing. And there are some other ones too, uh, such as the Crocodile one where there's an invocation where the Jugs will splash a lot less range and the Poisons will splatter a lot more. Having both of those on at the same time for Crocodile was so terrible. It just made the tidal wave uh, face so hard to deal with. Oh my god, that was trash. This new mechanic is crap. Also, the rotation in which you fight the bosses matters a ton during the higher levels. We decided we should do Crocodile first and the Beetle first because those two are generally a lot easier even if you do not have the salts aka overloads and Akka becomes definitely a lot more annoying without overloads at higher levels and also the baboon boss too becomes a lot more annoying at higher levels so we decided we should have overloads for those two and amazing results honestly just having that rotation made such a big difference in our expert runs that it started looking really good for us oh yes oh the hits Oh my god, 47, dude. With this overload. Oh, oh sorry, the, the breathing salt. Mmm. Amazing. Amazing. Adrenaline pot. 
Oh, I got another one. Oh, you thought I was done. You thought I was done. But I'm not even done. You're done, though. Bye. Damn, that was nice. That was really nice. Yeah, okay, this is definitely 2,000% better than what we were doing before. I'll tell you that. Alright, well, I'm not potted, so that sucks. <laughs> okay, it's gonna be super fast, so... Holy shit, it is so fast. This is very interesting. The acid was just not next to the boulder, so we don't have to actually clear the acid. It's free. So, I've been saving up tons of dragon darts over the years. I got over 10k, but I think it's time to use some of them because these expert level raids, at least starting to learn them, is quite difficult. And the blowpipe is actually really useful here. So, yeah, it's time to bring out the bad boys so that way I can learn a bit easier and quicker. Oh my god. Ay ay ay. We almost had it, bro. We need we need you to be alive for that though. Oh, we did it. Oh my god. Let's fucking go. Yo, Ambrosier, shout Ambrosier. Expert clear, suck it. I'm out. Yahoo, baby. Woo! That felt good. So it just took a lot of effort to get the expert cleared. So we're going to actually just focus a bit more on lower levels just because they're more consistent and that's frustrating. I do want to get better at it, but right now the focus is purples and it's probably better for us to do consistent runs for better purple chances per hour. Actually, I don't think we're going to make it, huh? How much is it going to hit us? Oh, 27. Oh, that's cool. Yo, that's a, such a sick trick, man. Oh, I got a jewel. Oh, Jewel of the Sun. <laughs> oh, I finally got a drop. It's not purple, but it's a Jewel of the Sun. <laughs> no, it's a new drop. Right? It's a new drop. It's a new drop, at least. Ah, the tease, bro. I would really love to get the blue one, though, because the blue one, I think, is really good. I'm not sure about this one. This one's kind of gimmicky. Oh, chap 2, apparently. Cool. Hey, we got this thing. I think it has a special attack here. Um, here we go. Let's read it. Uh, sacrifice 50 prayer points to, re to restore your hit points to 20% above maximum. Cure all poison restore. Drain stats for restore your run. This special can only be used within the tombs of Amaska. Ah, uh, shit. Hold on. Let me, let, me, let me just charge my saying staff. Honestly, I'm putting 50k on the saying staff too. Let's freaking go max charges. Let's get it. All right. Well, that still leaves me 50k blood runes approximately. So that's cool. Well, okay. Let's just deposit the D pig. I have like literally three extra. So I'm just going to put it in here just in case we do ever get those one down runs. Uh, we'll be able to. Yeah. One down. Oh, lit. That was sick. We one down that. Dragon pickaxe spec at 99 mining, you get like 21 damage. <laughs> nice. Oh, damn. 1938. I actually tried a bit there, you know? Damn, so 20 completion time. Poggies. Yep. I mean, I just keep doing it. It did, actually. Let's go. Whose purple is it? Nah, I guess it's my bruh. I don't see a key. Yo, let's go. Oh, gosh. Finally, let's go. Anything. I'll take anything, dude. Literally any purple is a good purple. Good luck, boy. What is it? What is it? What is that? It's got to be something good. I know it is. 
Oh, okay, the helmet, whatever, I'll take it, dude. Give me that, give me that shit. Yo, new upgrade. Hell yeah, Missouri mask. Let's go. Oh, shit. Let's go, Missouri mask. Hell yeah, man. The first item only took five days, but we got it. Yo, uh, Rose, double KC. Let's go. Did you just get that one? Uh, let me see, let me see. Uh, it was 56 normal, averaging probably like level 200, and yeah. That's uh, that's the bulk he, of it. Finally, he brings the damn range. All right, so how much how much is the how much does it cost right now? How much does it cost? Uh, I'll bring the I'll bring the helmet it's switch. Like of course. one one fifty. Like all, right, all right, I'll give you guys like forty mil or something. You know, give you guys forty mil each later. Oh, there's a double warning. Oh wow. Okay. Okay. There we go. All right. There we go. So we're gonna. Oh, actually, before I turn this into the actual version, so. This version, the base version, actually has stats. Let's see how much it gives range-wise. Oh wow, it still gives like 12 range. And it actually still gives uh, some range strength, 2 range strength, that's cool. Alright, well we're gonna combine this with the Missouri mass into the uh, full version. Nice. So the fully upgraded version has more defense and a little bit more prayer on top. So the Missouri Helm is the first ever range helm to give range strength, which means that in various different situations throughout this raid, I will be gaining a max hit with my twister bow and even the blowpipe too. So that's going to be really, really nice. And of course, I'm not counting the Slayer Helm because that helm, you have to be on task, but this thing just gives max hits regardless. So the twister bow is pretty nuts because when you're fighting a monster that has really high magic, like this crocodile here, just one max hit would actually translate to about three because of how this damage modifier works on that bow. But for the blowpipe, yeah, you just get one more. And if I get the top and bottom, I should be getting like at least three more max hits on the T-bow on high level magic monsters. And of course, an extra max hit with the blowpipe as well. So it would be a total of two on the blowpipe and I think six with the twisted bow. So I need to get those other two pieces. Oh, wow. New max hit with Amethyst starts. Holy shit, just with the helmet alone. That's sick. 31 instead of 30. Wow. The Missouri helm's gotta be one of the coolest looking helmets ever. It just matches with so much gear. Especially even Armadillo. It does a better job fitting Armadillo than Armadillo helm itself. Ah, this mask is so nice, dude. I already feel... Yep, this on the max hit there, 31. I already feel the accuracy improvement. So, in this raid, there is an NPC that will give you supplies, but you have to at least kill two bosses to access him one time, and then access him again would require the last two bosses before the final boss. When you are learning how to do the raid, you're typically going to choose probably Chaos section because that is a mix of good food and offensive potions like Adrenaline Potions mixed in with Brews and some Overloads, aka the Salts. But when you're really good at what you're doing, you typically just pick power because you get the Amberosas, which instantly resets your stats back to full. And you get Adrenaline Potions, which will allow you to spec twice as much. But they only come at two doses. Alright, let's open it. Oh my god, I got a mask clue and a blacksmith's hat. <laughs> cool. Hey, hey, that's a, uh, apparently that's a unique item. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh fuck! That was scary. Holy shit. <laughs> I'm gonna die, dude. Okay. Wow, that was really bad lighting. Okay, I'm ambrosiaing for that. That's an ambrosia moment right there. Wow, that was scary. <laughs>